Hello, this is Poor Nelson with Random Art Attack, and today we're going to be working in Substance Painter to create a stone material as you see right here. Now, we're not going to be using any base materials, so this is all basically from scratch. We're going to be talking about smart masks and how to basically layer. So go ahead, sit back, and enjoy this tutorial. Let's dive right in. So here I have loaded up a this scene. I have all of the different textures already baked in. If you're curious on how to do that, I have several different tech, uh, tutorials that talk about that. But you see I have an ambient occlusion, curvature, and all those things applied to the texture settings here. Now this model is kind of in shadow, and I don't like that very much. So I go to the view settings and I change the rotation until it's what I like. So I'm getting some highlights and good light onto the area. So I'm going to create a base material by adding this fill bucket. Changes the color you want. Roughness, I do want this to be kind of rough stone. I don't want it to be slimy and wet and stuff like that, so just this for the base texture. I'm going to make this all with inside uh, Substance Painter. I'm not going to use any pre-generated textures or anything like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fill layer and I'm going to drag what you just saw right there is I dragged this curvature map. I changed the UV to 1 and you can see that it's kind of highlighting the edges there, so I like to change this to overlay. So whites will become white, grays will become zero, and you can change the opacity as well. Now as I build underneath this, it's going to continue to kind of add these different highlights no matter what the textures. Now you can name these as you go. I'm probably not going to go ahead and name these just for the sake of the speed of this tutorial. But then what we're going to do next is I'm going to add some other things just to see what it looks like. So fill layer, I'm putting this, change the UV scale to 1, and this is thickness. That's not necessarily anything I want, so let's go ahead and try Ambient Occlusion. That's not bad. You can actually probably change this to Overlay or Multiply, and then you could change the opacity to what you want. Turn off all those different maps there so we don't need metal or roughness or anything like that. Now I want to go ahead and start adding some textures and variety, so I could either do a fill layer with a mask or I can just do a number normal layer like this. I'm going to go ahead and find a brush. These are alphas. I need a brush here. I like this dirt texture. This is one of my favorite ones. And I'm going to scale this up with a bracket key. And then as I go on, you can see that it starts to add kind of a fun little texture. I'm going to change the roughness. So it's not the same as the base layer because I like that differences. I'm going to change the color down to like a black. We don't need metal, so I turned that off there. And I can actually make that dark brown so we get color so it's not just black and white. And then also, if you go down in the height, you can see it cuts down into it. So I want some texture wear and tear. So this is actually digging into the, the stone itself because it, it's changing the normal. Now I'm not going to paint them back because for the tutorial, again, I try and make these fast so that you're not wasting your time and that you get just straight to the meat of this. So I'm going to go ahead and add a lot of different textures there. I can change the colors and I can start to change the brush to kind of lay, build up layers change this to a kind of more shiny, change the height so it's coming out. So I made that bigger than one. And you can see that there really well. Let's change this height off, change the color off, and I'm going to make this really shiny. And now as I paint on, you can't see it very well, but what's happening is it's not adding color, but it's adding just variety to the, um, the gloss. Let's try and see if I can get a, a view here that you can see. Let's go ahead and check. There's no roughness there. There's no roughness there. So I'm just going to change this roughness to be really shiny and go ahead and paint. The opacity might be pretty low. Oh, there we go. I think I saw it right there. Yep. Do you see right there in the shine? So it's starting to look a lot. You're getting this different variety, almost dappled color in the roughness. And so I'm just breaking up these layers. Now, cement's a really cool brush for stonework. You can play around with a lot of these things. There's some that can ha help with cracks and dirt and things of that nature. I'm just going to go ahead and create this so it digs in. I'm going to change it all the way. Watch how that... Oh, this is just roughness there. Or, excuse me, that's height. It's adding some interesting textures there. And already you, you're starting to see that this layering process of just kind of playing around with the same brush or same two brushes starts to add depth to this. You have cracks, you have dirt, you have all this different layup. Now I'm just playing around with different things. This is one of my favorite brushes. This is a dirt brush. It's good for adding like uh, moss or dirt spots or things like that. 
Now you can overdo it too much. Like right there, I'm not a huge fan of that. So I'm going to kind of layer that down. Then I'm going to add a layer, a new layer so that I can play with opacity here later like that. So it's not as strong and you could change this. You could do green things. You could do just add color to it because not all stone. I've never seen stone just black and white. There's always color to it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and add some sludge to this. So I just do a new layer, go to particles. Where's that at? And I'm going to go ahead and do this leak or this spill, splat, excuse me. So I'm going to change this to green. Let's change the roughness to be pretty shiny because it's sludge. And now as I drag this, you can see how it kind of just creates this nice oozy effect. You can change the size of the brush using brackets and then kind of just work your way across like that. And again, I'm just going pretty fast. In a real model, you might take a little bit more time, but not too much, because honestly, what we're going to do to this next kind of just um, phase out half of this anyways. It's just small details. Just go and kind of put sludge in at lots of increments. So you can see I'm just going crazy here. Maybe put some in the eyes there and it'll just leak out. Put it on top a lot like that, and it kind of leaks down over those wings. And so it's kind of cool. Yep, there we go. Now, this is looking not great, but we're going to go through and actually touch this up, and you'll see in a bit, by actually using the erase brush to go and kind of clean this up. And there we go. I can change the opacity so it's not such green grossness. I can change that to multiply. I don't like that because it makes it more black and white again. Go to roughness. I can change that if it's too shiny for your liking. Now I'm going to go to brushes and pick a good kind of noisy brush. So artistic is usually a good one. It's a little too strong, so you can go up and change the flow amount in the brush settings there. So I'm going to go to down to like 11 or so. And now you can see I kind of can fade out this stuff so it's not so strong. You can do it with dirt. You can do it with uh, just play around with the different settings. So a lot of this tutorial is just to show you that playing around with the default things and just layering it can get you a lot of good results. Some people are too afraid to make mistakes and what that adds up doing ends up doing is basically making it so that you're just stuck or you don't progress and so you, you, you don't create things. The best way to learn art is to make bad art initially with the intent to learn from your mistakes. So what I'm doing right now is I created a fill layer and I'm going down to smart masks and now you can pick any of these smart, smart masks and drag it in and it creates a mask. So you can't see this very well, but let's change this to like a different color here, just red. You can say I did a dirt, a ground dirt. And so it's masking out this dirt layer here. So if I go back to this and click the MG ground dirt, it actually gives me a couple options to play with. So right there. And I can basically change the amount of dirt we have. Just go ahead and play around with this till you get a setting you like. I usually use a bright color so I can see what it's actually doing. And then I go back into the original layer and then change it to the color and the texture and the roughness and stuff like that that I want. So dirt, I'm going to go ahead and make this a dark brown. And it's hard to see. And so I could go back into the, the, the mask and alter that a little bit. I'm just playing around with the different settings. See what I like? I think normal is where I want it. I'm going to go ahead go back here, change the different settings of the MG dirt filter. I think that's what it's called, right? So you can make it stronger. You can change the color and do anything like that. And so basically the flow for that is create a new fill layer and then drag and drop the smart mask and then you can kind of play around with those things. So we are getting closer and closer to the end of this tutorial. I'm just going to do a couple other smart masks, play around with the different smart masks, figure out what they do, see what works for you. Typically I like to, on if it was a gravestone, do a dirt layer to do kind of a... Um, ambient occlusion dirt layer to do some edge wear as well. The curvature map is taking care of that a little bit that we did at the very start, but you can have more control this way. So I'm just doing another fill layer, like I said, looking for different ones I want to try. So I'm going to do dust occlusion, see what that looks like. Ooh, that's cool. Now this is going to be very subtle because even with this bright red, you can barely see this. So maybe play around with the settings a little bit. So that's a good amount. I'm going to change the dust so it's not this bright red, but rather it's 
I'm going to try a light color. Typically, I use a dark color, but I don't want it to be too dark in the cracks. You don't always see that in stone. Sometimes you look at stone and you can see, see like right there, it starts to lose a little bit of the read if I go light, but you start to get a little bit of realism. So if you want a dark, easy, kind of more stylized looking stone, you can make it a uh, dark occlusion. There, I'm just going to go with a, a happy blend. So it's kind of like this light tan. I love that. I love that look right there. So now let's go ahead and just try one or two more uh, filters here. So again, another, oops, another fill layer, not layer. There we go. Change it to red so we can see it again. And this is basically my workflow with smart masks. I don't know exactly what all of them do, but you play around with them and you start to kind of get to learn, oh, I like this one. I don't like this one. Um, you can do inversions if you want to on half of these. So if, if I didn't want a ground dust, I could have like a dust settling on top by just inverting that mask. This mask isn't what I want, so I can just delete those masks off right there. Let's try Edge Strong. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. With that, I can add some edge wear. You don't want something like that. That, that That's looking like metal right there. And so I'm going to make something kind of a gray mute color. And you can drag it down in the queue. So I dragged it below the dirt there. And you start to get some popping right there. Now you just subtly build up on this. And so that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. As always, follow us on our different um, social medias, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. We like to interact with the fans. Also, consider following us on Patreon. Uh, supporters get some cool things. Also, it helps us make tutorials like this and buy fun equipment and try and make these tutorials better and better. So if you like what we do and you'd like to see more of it, uh, consider supporting us on that. And as always, thank you so much and have an awesome day.